Today on the show, we discuss the timing of God and how we need to be patient about it. That's next. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Modern Faith Unlimited. I would be uh, William Quinn. And I would be William Henley. Pretty good. Uh, William, glad how you, uh, how's everything going tonight on your side of the, uh, of the Metroplex? It's been going all right. Had uh, just got my car out of the shop. I uh, thought it was going to be a warranty repair. Uh, warranty was expired. Cost me $671. I do apologize for that, and um, uh, hopefully um, I'll be in your prayers on that. And then uh, on my end, uh, I am going through a little bit of a trial as far as a career uh, change goes, uh, so keep that in your prayers also. And then everybody listening, um, keep both our situations in your prayers. Uh, we do like to be open with our listeners, and uh, that's what's going through right now. So um, just keep, for everybody listening, just keep – what's going on in our lives and your prayers. And also uh, we, we are thinking about our listeners also. And um, if you have anything you want us to pray about, send, send a link to us, send an email or a message to us. We'll do whatever we can to help you out. So William, I do understand for you into our main topic tonight. Uh, you do have some an update you want to share with us as far as a, a previous episode. Yeah, so um, in the last episode, I talked about um, a guest speaker who uh, was preaching stuff uh, up at our church that I did not agree with. Um, I found out yesterday that he resigned his position. Um, he's still in ministry, but um, he's no longer preaching. I do uh, understand, and um, that, is, uh, that's just, that is sad, uh, so we'll keep him in, his, in our prayers, and hopefully... Um, God will give him a new sense of direction uh, on that. And um, yeah, um, so let's talk, let's go to the situation at hand I want to talk about for tonight. So basically, um, as far as my situation goes, um, I am in a little bit of a transition right now. I do want to be open with our listeners on that. Uh, one thing I also have been struggling with, within this time is the uh, subject of, of uh, God's timing. Uh, I do believe in God's timing, even though it is a struggle for me to uh, be patient with God on that. Um, yeah, it just, um, I just, you know, sometimes I do get frustrated with God sometimes. And, you know, I ask him sometimes, you know, why are you doing this to me, God? Why are you allowing this to happen? Just, I know I'm supposed to be patient with you, but I'm going to admit it's hard. You know, I just, I hate to go through, you know, the wedding game with God, but I do understand why he does it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like always looking back, I realized that God's timing was perfect, but it's like going through it, you're like, what are you waiting out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... It, that's a good thing to, to, to transition to, you know, what are we waiting on? Sometimes we're waiting on something that sometimes can be so fleshy and carnal. And I know we're supposed to wait on his, his goodness and his good spirit. But I think, I, I mean, there are times that when I'm, there are things I do wait on that want to gravitate towards what I want instead of what he wants the best out of for me. And it is struggle sometimes, you know. Even though we, we can pray so much about, hey, I, I pray this is what you want from me, Lord. I know the things that we want for him to bless us with can be carnal, unfortunately. I mean, um, I mean, sometimes there are, there are things that he wants, but you just sometimes we get the impression that he want, we want him to bless something that can be good for us, but in the end, maybe it's not the best for what he wants for us. Right. You know, one of the things I've been struggling with uh, for years, speaking about like blessing something carnal is uh, God's uh, said to me several times, am I not enough for you? And I'm like, 
spiritually, yes, but it's like, let's be honest, it's like, you're not here physically, and there's, you can't physically embrace me or hold me or stuff like that, and, um, uh, and you know, that's been something I've been strugg struggling along for years with God, is it's like, spiritually, yes, and if that's all I needed, yes, then you would be enough, um, but, um, I got to have physical interaction with people, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think God understands that. I mean, we're on this world. We need physical companionship and interaction. And, you know, it's hard now, especially when in the, in the, uh, in the uh, stuff we're going through right now, you know, just it's, I mean, it's not necessarily a physical uh, companionship, but I mean, we have, God has blessed us with technology like Zoom, which we're using right now for this uh, presentation. And it's hard, you know, that we have to go through. Mm. It's hard enough that we have to go through, you know, what God want, the, the, the being patient with God now, uh, before, even before, you know, what's going on. But now since all this um this crisis that we're going through right now over the world, it's going to make it even tougher. It's more, it's more frustrating to us that, you know, God can't bless us instantly. Like God can't bless us instantly. Um, what then what's uh, going right now? You know, we want to bless us instantly, but unfortunately, you know, God's timing is not that. Mm. Well, and I know like, Yesterday, um, I was up at the school and uh, sat down at a table in the cafe to uh, have a conversation with a couple of people. And I realized this is the closest I've been to someone else in weeks. Um, and uh, I know uh, I mentioned that I was in Tennessee a couple of weeks ago and um, uh one of my friend's uh, daughter came up to, you know, talk with her dad and she just kind of placed her hand on my shoulder and, you know, it's a sweet little kid thing to do, but I've realized that's like the first time someone had physically touched me in like six months. And it's, it's just this whole COVID thing. I mean, it's, um, you know, when, uh, you know, I, I live alone. I, I'm single, you know, my, my, you know, nobody lives with me. And so uh, there is, uh, it's like uh, today I gave someone a fist bump and, you know, that was physical contact, you know, it's like, um, I, and I used to not be a hugger. Um, I said, when this whole thing's over, I'm hugging everyone. I don't blame you there. Um, I think a lot of us believers, non-believers, are just waiting for the day that this is all completely over with and we can get back to normal, you know, and fellowship with each other again. That's the main thing I think a lot of believers are missing is true, honest fellowship, you know, getting together, you know, praise God. I know it's happening in some places right now. I know Franklin Graham had his big march in Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago, and, you know, that was awesome, by the way. And... But I, I think people are, are longing for the days when, not that big of us, not that big, but just you know the days that we can get together and worship God regularly again, not spread apart from each other, like five mm -hmm. feet away from each other. And yeah, I I think I think that day is coming. I'm I've, I've got complete faith that day is coming. I believe His patience will get us through that, and. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, God's timing in a good way is going to get us through this, this pandemic. And um, I also think that, you know, it's no accident that this has happened, like I've said in previous episodes. Um, I think this is going to cause individual believers as well as the church of God to come together and really worship him like we've never seen before. I really firmly believe that. Yeah. I think I kind of sidetracked us. So let's get uh, back onto this whole thing about uh, God's timing. Um, and 
I'm sure there's probably something in particular um, in your life that's going on. Uh, you you want to share about that, or I uh, yeah, basically earlier, just uh, I'm going through a job transition right now, and um, I'll just I'll just keep it like that, pretty much. I don't want to get into full details on that, uh, but I just I just feel that God is really leading me to something different than what I've been doing, and mm-hmm. what I've been doing is fine, but it's not. God, let you mind if I kind of uh, put in here a, a bit. Um, sure, so, uh, Quinn and I both met at seminary, and um, uh, we've both been called into ministry. And one of the things that's been really hard, not just for Quinn, but a lot of people I've known who have seminary degrees, is when they don't end up in the place that they thought God's called them. Exactly. And you can't understand how hard that is for someone's faith when they feel that God's called them someplace. They've gone through the training, and then suddenly nothing changed. We're right back where we started, and we're like, why did I go through this? Or are you really there? Are you really looking out for me? And I've seen this not just with you, but with many other people just over and over and over again saying, God, have I misheard you? Yeah, I, I, I do fear that. I mean, I shouldn't, but I do fear that what we did was a big misunderstanding from God. I pray, hope and pray it wasn't. I mean, I don't think God would be someone that would take us through that and then say, oh, you made a mistake. I don't think our God is like that, though. I think Mm -hmm. he put us there for a purpose. Maybe it's not immediately. I'm pretty sure it's not because of what we're going through right now. Uh, But I do believe, like I said, coming back to the top, I do believe in God's timing. Um, It's hard. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to, to be patient. I mean... I mean, I'm patient with God. Just the people around me are just so impatient. I mean, as far as like, you know, relatives and people that want you to do well, that want instant gratification, unfortunately. And um, I just feel that, you know, I can't trust on, I mean, people around me. I have to trust on God and his timing. I mean, it's hard, but I have to do that. Yeah, no, I, I just completely understand. Uh, um, I know uh, right now. Um, well, th- there's just so much going on. Um, so God's called me to plant a church in Austria. Um, I think I may have shared that on the yeah. show before. Maybe I, I have it. Remember? Okay. Uh, so, um, but. You know, this is definitely doors that have to be opened and not just one door, but multiple doors. And if it was up to me, I would have moved to Austria in 2013. Um, And uh, God has uh, like, there's been times when I thought, well, maybe I should change churches. It would be easier if I was with... um, uh, this church or this church, um, I thought of joining Hillsong because, you know, they ha- they're they working on global expansion and stuff. And, you know, right. God's keeps saying, no, stay where you're planted. And, and you know, I, I am starting now to see things after seven years, I'm starting to see doors opening. But um, it's like they're cracked open. It's like, you know, um, they're not full, still a they're not full blast over here, but you can see what's behind the doors initially. Right. I get where you're coming from there. Yeah. But even still, it's like, I don't know when it's going to be opened. And I'm still, you know, there's times I'm sitting here with God. I'm like, you know, I'm not getting any younger, you know. I hear you. I mean, I'm not getting any younger myself. And, um, just patience is like it, like about. I mean, patience is a virtue. We just have to yeah. stick with it. Uh, basically, one verse that I'm looking at right now is uh, he is patient, and it, what came up was Second Peter three, uh, chapter three, verses eight and nine. Um, 
and I'll go ahead and read that to you right now. I don't know what translation it is, but I'll just read it right quick. Uh, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to his repentance. Go ahead. Uh, but yeah. I want to touch on this uh, when you're done. Sure. I mean, that's the space of scripture there. I mean, I mean, one day, I mean, just, I mean, like a millisecond to us is just, I mean, like a, a year for us is like nothing to him. He knows the time. So we just have to use, look at that verse. We just have to trust him. Plain and simple, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, going to pull that up uh, real quick, too, uh, because it's I was actually uh, talking about this uh, yesterday um, at the school. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see. Uh, I, I, OK, so this entire chapter, chapter three um, is uh, of Second Peter, chapter three, is why I believe that the Lord is not going to return in my lifetime. Uh, and uh, I know this is pretty uncommon uh, view, but um, uh, it, it, yeah, you're talking about patience and stuff here, but this whole thing talks about um, how the Lord uh, doesn't want anyone to perish and how he, uh, yeah, most, yeah, right here, uh, um, starting in verse three, most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first uh, created. Uh, and, uh, then, you know, it jumps down to, you know, eight, you know, let us not forget that, you know, one day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Um, and it says the Lord is not really being slowed about promise as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent, which is exactly uh, what you just uh, mentioned. So um, I take this uh, that God is going to uh, hold off. Um, the return of Christ until um, until there's no one left proclaiming, until there's no one left uh, getting saved, because he wants to give everyone a chance. And yeah. I, I feel I, I that think, as go ahead, go ahead. I feel that as long as you know there's people uh, in seminary, people going into ministry, uh, there are, uh, people look at the U.S. and say, "Oh, the U.S. is going, you know, is so bad and stuff like that." But they're forgetting that um, in Asia and in Africa, the church is exploding, and thousands upon thousands of people at a time are coming to Christ and stuff. And uh, just because, you know, um, Christianity is on the decline in the U.S., it's, it's on the rise worldwide. And we need, need to, um, and so a lot of people will sit here and look at stuff going on in the U.S. and say, oh, that's end time prophecy. And, oh, look at this treaty between Saudi Arabia and Israel. This is an end time prophecy and stuff. And it's like, no, the Lord is giving everyone a chance to hear right. and to repent. Right. I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's just funny opposite, you know, you know, we were like, used to be like the hub of Christianity in Western in civilization. And now you see Asia, the church is exploding there in Africa, especially in Africa, you know, so many, so many churches are popping up in Africa. And I know Pentecostalism is big in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I just, I think, and, you know, it's kind of sad that America, it's, it's on a decline, which is probably not um, surprising to God. You know, I mean, he knows his, his church, his people in, in America are still faithful to him. I mean, he'll, he'll protect us. But I just find it interesting you know, that more of the East is now embracing Christianity. And that, that's probably a good thing. You know, it had not before, but it is now. And that that's, has to be a good thing. Mm hmm yeah, uh, and could probably go into a whole episode on that, but um, we're not going to. Uh, this, 
I don't know how much further you want to go, but you know, this was going to be a short episode, uh, um, basically to get some updates and uh, to test out using Zoom and to test out Quinn here um, recording the show for a change and um, editing and stuff and see how uh, that goes. So, sounds uh, to, to me, it sounds pretty good still, you know. I mean, I like it, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, I was just really excited going into the show tonight because I'm like, I don't have to edit. I don't yeah. have to I don't have to upload it to Facebook when it's done. You're doing that. You know, it's just it, it, the only thing I had to do was get my uh, camera working. Gotcha. Well, let's go ahead and just uh, end there. Do you have any final thoughts for tonight, uh, Shane? Final thoughts. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, uh big uh, uh, praise um, is that this class I just started this week that I was really worried about because they actually dropped it last year because I was overwhelmed with it. They re reworked the class. The amount of reading uh, went from 1,500 pages down to 750. There you go. It went, it went from uh, having to do uh, two Blackboard discussions and an essay every week to doing... Um, one essay, one book report, and then the discussion questions. Amen. Uh, was the same professor? No, different professor. But um, they've reworked a lot of the classes this year because uh, just COVID has just mentally, uh, both students and professors have has, uh, gotten everyone. And so they reworked a lot of the classes. Awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. I hope, I hope. Can't wait to see that A on your report card, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, let me go ahead and just end the show. Uh, like I said, if you want to follow us on social media, is uh, Twitter is Modern at I, Modern Limited. Uh, Facebook is Modern Faith Unlimited. Instagram is Modern Faith Unlimited. Also, our website, uh, www.modernfaithunlimited.com is our website. Um, hashtag the show if you'd like. And Follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time uh, for William Quinn uh, and William Henley. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Bye-bye.